order. Are there any changes or additions to the uh, agenda? And I recognize the communication committee's got a couple of requests we want to add. And uh, I'd like to add just for discussion mask mandate. Is there anything else? No. Eric? Eric? Yes, everybody on. Just good, good evening. Um, specifically on mass mandates, I don't know how you want to handle this on the agenda, but I got a request from the library that we specifically mandate masks for the library. So I don't know how that fits okay. in. Well, we'll bring that up under the mask mandate discussion then. Okay, thank you. Uh, if there's no other items, then if Beth doesn't mind, we're going down through our orders. Okay, first up, Black Diamond Barbecue, six hundred dollars, uh, and that's catering, and we'll be reimbursed. Uh, next up is Roasted Fuels, um, one thousand four hundred seventeen dollars and eighteen cents, with one hundred forty-two sixty-two due to the village. Burlington Communications, outside repairs and parts, $136.25 for the installation of an antenna. DeMars Media um, Conservation Committee expense for videos is $600. Free Mountain Trailers, a swivel, swivel linchpin, parking supplies, $35.56. Welding supply, hog welding supply, a cylinder lease one year for parts and supplies, $45.50. Uh, attorney fees for uh, recording, uh, this is a recording of an overpayment for the clerk office, $15. Johnson Hardware and Rental, a battery and wrench for $488. What was that for? Do you know? Okay. Um, Jordan's electrical contracting fire panel adjustment for $95. Half of that is from the village. Lamont County Sheriff's Department alarm monitoring um, $270. $202.50 of that is due from the village. Why is that showing up? Is the quarterly fee? Oh, okay. Uh, Lark label, state label, uh, sorry, stake marker logo for the tree board expense. That's four hundred and sixty nine dollars and eighty cents. Is that paying somebody to do the labeling? Is that what that is? You know. I'd have to. Are you want to dig that one out, Yeah. Uh, Who was the major for uh, Mark Um, Lovering, Susan Lovering, compost, $248.04. Alan Manchester, tax overpayment, $2,000, $2,001.80. Uh, Maria St. Pierre, over tax payment, $2,273. Uh, New England Municipal Disaster Recovery, $692.12, of which half of that came from the village. Uh, New England Truck Tire um, for GF Tires. Outside repairs and parts, $5,081.28. And then there's a second charge of $1,026. Those one of our big truck. The five thousand is the tires for the tenant, the other thousand or something is the um, Dutch tires. Um office depot paper. $177.30, half of which came from the village. Um, Johnson Landfill for Ross Environmental, uh, solid waste landfill expense, $2,514. Staples Business Credit, 
printer filing notebooks, $254.48. Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher, legal services, $1,144.66. Uh, Stowe Reporter, for equipment operator job posting, $268.56. TD Bank, for facilities and maintenance, soccer, basketball, and activities and events, a total of $524.43. Um, that's a credit card payment, so paying credit card fees. Union Bank, a loader, interest on loan payments is $351.47. And the Union Bank loader, um, $26,000. 100, $26,110, you think I would say the numbers right at this point, and 63 cents. Um, US Postal Service, post office box B, $100. Viking hives or sides, not sure how you say it, conveyor, uh, $544.40. Vermont League of Cities and Towns, the town fair, $168. What was that, Ross Environmental was just one that I didn't recall. There wasn't anything in particular about it. Johnson and Phillips, at least. Yep. Yeah. What was the LARC? LARC was for uh, 15 uh, marking stakes to identify the trees and 15 labels for those trees. So okay. it was not a single sign that totaled up to that high. Price. And there's that donation to pay for that bill. Yeah. Okay. Are there any further questions or not? Anything else you want to bring up? Matt, do you have anything? No. Okay. No, thank you. What's the board's pleasure on the meeting minutes for November 15th, 22nd, and 29th? Direction uh, to the 29th that it's. It could have been that. I thought it was that. It could have been that, but in, in the original version that was sent out, it said you both made the motion and seconded the motion. So that part definitely has to be changed. In my notes, it was that seconded and thinks that if Beth had seconded that. Uh, what was it for? What was the motion? Uh, to enter into executive session. Uh, I believe that's what Okay, I'll make that correct. I guess I would look for a motion. Motion to approve with the correction. Okay. We have a second. Second. Motion and second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Your motion was for all three, right? Yes. Uh, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Yeah. I'm staying. One on stage. Uh, Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Right. Welcome back. Rosemary, you got the floor. Welcome back. Oh, how you. was your trip? Very good until I tripped over the sidewalk. I guess we're not going to do it. No, okay. we we'll The only thing I have is um, errors and omissions for the assessor's office. This is the final one because you can't change the give list after December 1st. The first one is for Francis Palabat and Nancy Records. And the other three are for J.A. Cunningham Farm. They're all current use corrections for adjustments. And that needs to put a signature on the second page. Okay. Need a motion to approve the corrections. What are the corrections? Just subtractions in the brain box. So current use will only be full when they sit, they'll do them in the device. Who needs me? Oh, it's just. What's board's pleasure? Logan to accept the errors and corrections. So move, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. 
Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, is it all board seeing? Seeing none, all those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That voted uh, in favor or opposed? Aye. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, I need to place an order for ballot envelopes. The town now has to purchase them. State is a little providing for town meeting. Okay. What are the chances you guys are going to send the ballot out to everybody this year? Uh, we did not discuss that. What was the cost? Yeah. It's like $50 a box. Four boxes of each envelope. Okay, so about 200 bucks there. And what is the cost to mail? Depending on how they do. We're planning on doing a mail in ballot. We haven't discussed it, but she, Rosemary's asked uh, if we want to purchase the. Uh, I've heard grumblings that legislature may bring up. The same thing we did last year for county. We're we supposed to bring that up with their department. So. The Australian ballot? That, that, that may be possible, but nothing guaranteed at this point. We could probably wait a little longer than this. Yeah, how long would it take to turn around? We're doing the survey what we want right now. Or to do a survey. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you can't buy them later. Who is doing the survey? The supplier? Secretary of State's offices. Well, is that going to determine whether which way they meet? I'm just saying as legislators, so no. it has nothing to do with what the legislature How often do the envelopes change? If we, Not very often. So if we order them and didn't use them this year, we can expect to use them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we're going to mail it out or not, uh, what's the board's thoughts on not driving well for you to get the four boxes? And then we can decide. That'd be we... four times three, which is three So we're $600. Well, what's your sense of spending that kind of money to not really use it? Well, we still mail out some. Some. Yeah, it's just requested. And if they don't change, uh, we would have only we could mail them out. Your school question, they bring some absent people like that if you put them go that way. If, if, the school merger question. Oh, the school merger question. That might bring a lot of absent people. Well, they can request them. We don't have to mail them out. Right. You think 600 would get us by for that? Is that what you're saying? 600? That should do 2,000 worth of numbers. That's a percent of the price. And she's also hearing rumblings, rumors the state may request. Yeah, I know. I know. It, it's probably worthwhile to get them here and then we'll decide at a later point if we're going to mail them to everybody or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's because I need to be sure we get the next time to go on the purchase. Well, then we're going to be probably trying to get an idea of how many tickets are going to come. So, where this isn't placing the order, this is no. expressing interest. Yeah. Let's say there's no harm in expressing interest. Right. But more interest is expressed and more of a chance they'll have to sit tell us to do it. I think this is the printing company asking, right? Mm -hmm. Not no. the legislature at all. Right, right. The Secretary of State, are they involved in it too, going through the printing company, correct? They went up to the printing company. Okay. I suppose it won't hurt nothing. Okay, anything else? Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? 
Matt, you got anything? No, I'm having a hard time hearing, so um, I'm working on that. But uh, no, I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, just a review of plan purposes. All right. So I'm going to start with the uh, packet for recreation. So this is about a fifty thousand dollar purchase. Uh, for a variety of playground equipment that's being uh, primarily paid for uh, by donations and uh, grant funds. Or should I say entirely paid for? Entirely. Yeah. Uh, With money to spare. <laughs> probably picking up trees tonight. <laughs> Kids have a racket today, don't they? With all their fancy playgrounds. We've got details on, on the equipment afterwards. Um, this brand, Miracle, is favored by the uh, individual making the donation. Uh, this is not the same one. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. There's more on the table right there. Um, let's see. The so we we don't have competing bids for this, but it's also true that the playground equipment is uh, usually it's not exactly the same from one company to another. And again, this is the one that's favored by the individual making the about thirty thousand dollar donation to us. Uh, to make the purchase. So what are you looking for from us? Just blessing to go yes, ahead. It's okay to do it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You know, it is it's not costing the town anything, but it is you know money passing through our hands. I don't want to count from yes. Oh, so, so incredible. When I was a kid we had a few swings and a teeter car. Yep. All the fun stuff you have had in And we had a lot of fun too. <laughs> what, 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 what's the difference in this is just a budget and this is a goal? Uh, that this is the budget that was submitted for the grant proposal. So this had some of the um, notes on like signage and the um, you know groundbreaking ceremony. Public works, the donations, value, all that stuff. And what's what's the prep on the public works side? Um, I don't think there'll be too much. Um, Jason and I talked about the other day. We need to get the train and the ship that are there out of there, and um, there's the quality improvements that need to be done. Um, that's what we're looking at. And then when we do that. We might need some help from them, but in the past, every morning, we're going to scrape a little bit more space there. So we have an Act 250 approved to increase the footprint by just a little bit. And they're okay with digging around there? To the extent that we're doing the digging, they're okay. Do we have the, the Act 250 has been filed and approved? This has all been done direct. <clears throat> Seven or eight years ago, too. Yeah, we're just the footprint because everything now needs like X amount of clearance around every piece, etc. And so we're just increasing the footprint a little bit to accommodate the increase of equipment. And the uh, the fall protection that we're using now is the P stone. Mm -hmm. and we'll continue with that. So you can fall on rocks. Yeah, you're like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> as long as they're thick enough, I guess. It looks nicer. <laughs> yeah, it looks nicer than that. I think it's actually, it probably is better cushioning than just sand or anything, too. It, it's all very small, round stones. So I they, know what it is. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's in, in, this is in pretty good shape. But yeah, it's all uh, covered by. By grant and donations. Mm -hmm. There's 
right currently there's about five thousand extra dollars for things that maybe we didn't you know we try to think of everything in planning but of course there's going to be some that to come up with I guess the point of sort of choosing this one is we talked to them about maintenance and mean you know because we don't want to get a thirty thousand donation then we have to spend ten thousand dollars a year to maintain it and um, it's the same equipment that's used over at the elementary school and there's very low maintenance on it occasional flopping of the rocks and you know your TV that kind of stuff but the equipment itself stays with the performers and has a warranty that comes with it for that for a time frame. Board's pleasure. All we have to authorize it. So that's the total of 49,860, right? 49,860. So make sure I'm getting the totals right. For the playground, yep, and then $1,500 for uh, access mass. So we're going to increase the accessibility of all our sites. Um, but that Moby mat, that's a different vendor, correct? Yeah. Um, I move to award the $49,860 to Miracle um, for the purchase of playground equipment for uh, Leia's Memorial Playground. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. I need more discussion. And this did not need another bid from anybody else because you took care of it, correct? Because we only have one bid here, right? That's right. I don't think so. But Brian and I are going to check, double check the fine print before we. Yeah, we're, we're examining it with uh, the grant company, but the, the request is from the uh, owner that they are they the, the private donation of $30,000. They want to go with this bid. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a amendment. Now, to uh, contingent on the grant funding acceptance. Is that considered a friendly amendment to you? Yes. Okay. I think that is a friendly amendment. Any other discussion? <laughs> is there any particular reason you're not mulching the moldy mats as well, or are you just going to do that separately? No, I'm going to do that separately. Obviously. Any further discussion? So none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. And do you want to make a, another motion on the, the map? Sure. Um, but can you just help me? Sorry, say that again what the mat is for. The mat is for access, so the keystone is hard to maneuver on if you're using a walker or a wheelchair or anything like that. And so the um, Moby mats are to create a more accessible space to get over to. We have a couple of specific, um, specifically universally adaptable items. So it'll be stationary to the mobile accessible equipment. Yes. Uh, motion to approve the Moby mat for $1,500 for Leah, uh, Leah Memorial uh, Playground contingent on grant approval. Good motion, do we have a second? Second. Good motion and second, any discussion? None. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Okay. aye. The eyes have it. Okay, any other major purchases? The other one we have is for public works. Uh, Jason gave you a hand out for that one. So yep. On the bottom of this, we got a different grant for um, just to put a small climber over at the Legion Field where TNL is. Um, the equipment there is seeing excess abuse on during Tuesday Night Live, like it's we're over, it's over capacity. When the whole crowd is there. So we're trying to increase the, the climbers and different things there. And so Rise, Rise Vermont gave us $1,500 towards putting another small climber in over there. 
Okay. Does that and then the bottom here yeah. is the Legion Field playground. It's the bottom two lines. So, so what we voted already is not included. This is not included. No, the, the, what we voted on up above was for Old Mill Park, and then this okay. is for the small park next to the school. Okay. Yeah, Legion Field. Yeah. All of these. What's the board's pleasure there? Um, is this does this include installation only, sir? Does this require? No, this is similar to the yellow and blue one that's over there. It's just like myself and a volunteer put it up. putting it together and yeah, and making sure the rocks are over it. And do we have the grant? Do we have the approval of the grant? Yes, we have the grant. So a motion to approve the um, Legion Field expansion playground equipment. Well, sorry, wait, not right. Who are we, who, are, who is this going with? Um, one is the school teachers, so five, seven, and is the um, sure. yeah. playground is the actual piece of equipment. And then the horse stall natural tractor supply has some stuff, so we'll sort of just price this locally. So for those, we don't have a quote here though, right? The line with the hyperlink in it, that's the teacher supply, that's the um, climber. 1,053, 38, 89 weeks. And the horse stall mats are for falling on. <laughs> uh, they fall protection and also it's a, um, also considered an accessible Climber, so you could use a wheelchair and go through the center of it if you um, if you chose to wear that too. For the second one, Lisa, I feel like um, because it's not specific around the grant funding, that we should probably get multiple quotes. Okay. And and see the quote rather than the link. Like it's just a printout of the page. I think that would be better. This is not time sensitive, right? No. And back there, there is like, the picture of the equipment in the link. And I can get more than that. I can, you know, specs, equipment specs and stuff. That's what we're looking for. I think something with the quoted amount would be quoted amount, and then this is our limit. Uh, one thousand. Our, our advice for anything is get more than one quote if possible and appropriate. The rest of the board concur with that? I'm fine with that. So, so you're looking for a multiple quotes on a thousand dollar deal? It's over a minor and it's not like the first one that the grantor. Yeah, I know. I get that, Beth. But in the last several meetings we've had, we've approved things that uh, in multi thousand dollar range, like close to ten thousand dollar range, which violated our policy. And we went ahead and did it anyway. Now, tonight we have a, a deal here that's about a thousand bucks. Now we're going to follow the rules. I have no problem with it, you know, as long as we follow the rules all the time. I mean, I still think that, so here's what I know about this one. I know that there's no time sensitivity. We have a, we don't have an actual quote. The others we had a quote too, but this one, we don't have the actual quote, we just have a link. And why wouldn't we? Why not? As long as we do it from here on out, the same way, it's fine with me. Okay, I'm taking it, board wants to get. Yeah, that's oh. easy enough. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Um, uh, Jason stepped out. We're yeah, okay. We're okay with the donated piece, though, right? We wanted to do it line item by line item. I'm not sure I'm public <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, uh, the purchase that we've got coming up for the public works is uh, springs for the uh, 2021. Software. The way that's come in, the uh, 
the modifications and body work we added to it uh, is pretty heavy for the chassis and it doesn't sit very well and makes it difficult to drive. Uh, we can make the fix uh, by adding additional springs to it. the handling and uh, reliability of the, of the vehicle. Um, let's see, the, it's a little bit more expensive because the parts, they have to order them, they can't manufacture them themselves. Uh, you use a particular, particular kind of leaf spring, uh, which is also going to be a decent amount of insulation. So, uh, it is going to be over a thousand dollars. We can, right now, we only have a single quote for this. Uh, we can approach others. This is the same individual we've typically used for this type of work before. Uh, we have a pretty good track record with them, but we can seek multiple quotes. We don't have them at this time. Um, and we're still in process, so. They're always cheap, like for our tire tank and stuff, we have these guys too, and they're always the cheapest for the tire tanks. And they've always done all the spring of the trucks and they come right up and they have a salesman and he comes up and sees it and he runs and he'll stand right behind it. That's why we've always gone with it. Is Bailey's in Essex? Uh, no, this is the one down in Barry. Barry here. They're kind of the only game in town, really. They are. I mean, we have to reach out a little farther. So I know this local. More so, blood and light all issues and everything. Is this springs all the way around, or just in the past in the front? This is springs. These are the numbers that he ballpark because he was. He's. I was with Brian. We called. He was felt that he was pretty close, but he couldn't. You know, he wouldn't. That's why it was a little bit of a variance there. But yeah, this is for all four corners that point. Only to all four corners. And I reached out to Parker at Clark's. It won't void the truck's warranty, but it will void the warranty on the spring pack, like what he said. So if something happens to a spring pack in the future, Clark won't take ownership of the spring pack. But they're going to email me that. And to the bottom one, about biking, Andy got to me at 11 30 today after I already had the spring. And uh, we took the truck right down because we were going to squeeze it right in to get the three electrical issues fixed. And also, they put the salter in the wrong place. Yeah. Are they going to fix that? On He's like, Andy said, well, Andy wasn't involved in that. It was my fair uh, salesman that come around yeah. and then you and Mark. And because Mark was involved and Mike, their salesman, uh, he thinks they're going to honor what they said about this, the spinner part. Yeah. And everything else, they're going to take care of this. And as far as the electrical issue, our truck is not the only one that's having it. So, yeah. something that is going on in our shop. Okay. What's more, it's a pleasure here. You want to authorize this expenditure? I think it's something that needs to happen, but I'd rather have concrete numbers. I know it's not a wide range, but again, we have to take a guy and the truck and his bag down so they can have it in the shop for a while. And they have to measure that in the shop. They can't, you said they have a salesman that comes out. Oh, yeah, Tim, they have to. Look it up, I guess, because trucks, they're, they're pretty new. The CV that just came out, so, and their air ball spring is called. So they have to, all has to be, because every CV out there, like there's two down in Lake right now, they only got a GVW that's 195. Ours is 225. There's some that are a little bit more. So they're rating all the trucks a little different. So there's not one spring that's universal, but just a CV. So If we are worried about three hundred dollars, it's going to cost three hundred dollars for one of our guys to bring the truck down and bring it back. And the time they spend. Yeah, well, and I assume that they could do some more research and find out, but apparently they can't. 
what, what they're telling us is that they want to see the truck. And I was there for the conversation with Jason. You know, that they could get us a little bit more specific, maybe, but they're going to want to inspect the truck in person. Uh, two weeks to the next board meeting, we might be able to get them out to the shop instead of us taking it to them, possibly. Um, but I don't, I can't guarantee that. You know, if we, Time is wasting right now. You know, every, I mean, we've got some fairly warm weather and rainy weather, but it could all go head south here at a snap of a finger and, and you'd need that truck, right? It should be fixed. I mean, Tim, he was the primus in there. Tim can come up, it's just they're, they're so busy with backward and stuff. He, he is a salesman for the New England, so he goes at all the towns and everywhere. He just said he wouldn't be here for a while or we could bring you down on his own estate. So I plan on having brought down if you guys were on board with, I guess, doing it a little bit. Uh, we can, but Viking has it. I don't know how long Viking, he's hoping to have it done this week. How many miles have you even got on that thing? We have like 85 that we've put on it ourselves. The truck has, I think, 300 and something now. It's been back and forth. Oh, wore out? Okay. Well, Does this make the qualification? For two bids, Mr. Chair. If anything over a thousand dollars, we yeah. should attempt to get a second bid for it. We but it's not a requirement until we get to I don't remember offhand it's two thousand or five thousand dollars, but it's definitely more than this before it becomes a requirement. Well, maybe a couple of phone calls. And if we don't get any answers from anybody, we need to go ahead and get this thing fixed. Oh. I think if you approve this, you can. I'd like to think that you can trust uh, Jason and myself to be good stewards of the public money yeah. and do our best with uh, keeping it down. But we can't get a specific dollar amount for you before or like until our next meeting. Well, this is a semi emergency in this truck. So why don't we just go ahead and do it that way? Make a motion not to exceed. $1. No, to exceed $1680. I would do $2,000. They're ballparking. They could be wrong by $100. Okay, $2,000. Make a motion. Yes. Okay, we have a motion authorizing this not to exceed $2,000. And we have a second. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Matt? All those, yes, opposed? Yeah. All those opposed? Yeah, I'm done. No, no, no. I'm sorry about that. The aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Motion passes. When do you expect it back from Vikings this week? I'm hoping by the end of the week is what Andy said. Where are they located? Uh, well, it's hopefully it'll be Better. And all of that's warranted with them. All that is warranty and stuff that they didn't do that was on the bill sheet that they're on. I mean, it's like the standard, the only thing that's up in the air that you could have talked to Mike about. Okay. That includes the camera? Yeah, that's included the cameras, all the lights, the flickering of the lights. That was a ground issue. That we ended up, the town of St. James was brand new. And they found it in their shop by playing with it. Uh, and it was Okay. I'm not alone in that, but it's company. Any other expenditures? Yeah. Uh no other funding expenditures over a thousand dollars. Okay. I guess we're ready to get into the better uh road cap. <laughs> Um, just this item, and then you're all, right. all set as long as you're here. That's fine. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the better roads applications are due on November, on December seventeenth. 
uh, we're looking at uh, improvements on Grove Road, Benover, Lindway Lane, and Railroad Street. We will probably not uh, apply for all four of these locations, uh, but this is kind of where we're at right now. Uh, in places that we're going to look at, we're going, we're still doing our estimating and getting the cost together. Uh, submit the applications. Uh, you know, we get our estimating done this week and submit applications next week. Over those roads, yeah. No, it's good. Uh, Rural Road, Benover, Lendway Lane, and Railroad Street. What did you say that? I said they're listed on the next page. Oh. Um, Rural Road is, has some uh, pretty good areas of concern. It's also uh, the only road in that area that hasn't been serviced recently. Uh, so it would, in theory, kind of let us concentrate some of our efforts in other parts. So this is a pretty good opportunity to just kind of knock it out and get it done. Um, then over near Woodward uh, has an area that's highlighted in our road erosion inventory as being a uh, area of interest. Um, and we think that's a culvert replacement and uh, a little bit of ditching. There's two culverts, that, four sections of culvert that we replaced two culverts. Um, and we'd be upside with them at 24 inch. Must be coming back towards the college because he did the other way, what, four or five years ago? Yeah, we'd be going from Woodard Road to the intersection of Plate Hill. Yeah. On the hill there where. When we got that flood two years ago, one of the culverts got lifted up out of the ground. We reset it, but they're not really big enough to take the water flow because there's no where on the southwest side to dump the water out, you know, into a settlement pond or anything. So it has to be carried all the way to the bottom. Uh, Lindway Lane and Railroad Street are, it's mostly on Lindway Lane. Uh, highlighted in our road erosion inventory as having some critical areas. Uh, so that'll be the same. Improving ditches, replacing culverts that need it, upsizing the culverts that need it. And uh, okay. work on that. I, I don't think there will actually be much on Railroad Street itself, uh, but we'll have to get out in more detail. So uh, yeah, I'm just looking for you need a approval to apply for the grant yes I, i'd like approval to apply for the grant i thought um, you didn't know which ones you were going to go for yet were you going to apply for all and see what we get I, I think that's a little bit more likely is that we'll apply for all of them we might scale back uh railroad street specifically and try and loop that in with a uh, paving grant mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of stormwater infrastructure on railroad street that is village stormwater infrastructure. It's not just a culvert. So we might just try and wrap all that into another project and leave railroad street alone for the time. What is that problem in front of the Hopperley house lay with and lie with? That stormwater drain? Yeah. yeah uh, village. It is village stormwater infrastructure uh, on operating on the town road, uh, which it is a big part of the operator's difficulty with getting the resolution is that it really involves both of us. You said it involves both of us. Yes. Yeah. Well, we need to find a way to take care of it because that's been a problem for a long, long time. I, I would like to enter. Uh, Hopefully we'll do the groundwork for it this year, but I'd really like to enter into a, uh, a large infrastructure uh, program for Railroad Street to, you know, grind the pavement, repair the stormwater infrastructure, and repave it all in one project. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's concrete under there too. You know, we, we need to do a job right and get rid of all the concrete. Not what they did on uh, Main Street here, made cuts and they didn't rip out the concrete. They should have taken all that concrete out before they did that job. I, I expect that this is going to be a pretty big project. 
Okay, because that concrete has to go out first to do a good job. That's that's the way. That's what you have to do to really correct the stormwater. Yeah. The question will be who will pay for it. That will be very very expensive. Uh, we're also interested in uh, Maple Hill and Collins Hill next year. Uh, those have a lot of steep grades, and uh, we've got some regular kind of issues with wash out and clean out on, on a couple sections there. So they're of high interest, but I don't think they're going to qualify for the Better Roads program because they're not in those areas. They, we have some stormwater issues with them, but they're not hydrologically connected segments. So I don't think they qualify. So we're thinking, well, we will rent the excavator, use it on the approved, as long as we have the excavator, keeping it for a couple extra days and paying for that out of pocket is not going to be uh, too much of a burden for us to take it and finish up a couple of the projects. Good. Let's board a pleasure. Brian? Go ahead, Matt. Is this an opportunity to make improvements on the intersection of Lenway and Railroad Street? Possibly. Um, I, I'm thinking one of my target areas on Lenway is definitely going to be uh, further down Lenway, closer to the uh, closer to the salt shed. There's a culvert there that always really seems to have some pretty heavy, heavy erosion near the outlet. So I think that's probably where we're going to focus our attention. But if uh, Lenway is the one that we haven't had an opportunity to do a good site inspection for yet. Um, so if we do come up closer to Railroad Street, wrapping the intersection into the same project would make a lot of sense. Uh, but I don't know that we're, I don't know how close we're gonna get to the intersection. Okay. My motion for Brian to submit the applications to the better roads. Grant for the four roads. Yep. Grow road done over Lenway Lane and Railroad Street. Yes, because I'm going to hear you. My motion that Brian submit the Better Roads grant application for Grow Road, Ben Over Road, Lenway Lane, and Railroad Street if time permits. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? Second. Seeing none, all those in favor, sing card saying aye. 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 How do you vote, Matt? Aye. The motion passed. Okay, library budget. Thank you. So you've got a copy of the draft library proposal in your packet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jason, I guess there's a pine tree down on plot road. There is a car on my Thanks. Thank you. Um, and we're going to see a little revision up on this, depending on uh, our vote later on employee compensation. Which tracks have been sent off to Because we should have left enough here. Yep, he could have. He, he did have some additional knowledge that I. I don't have so I mean that's where our questions went. Uh, I might have needed to rely on it. Uh, so we're, we're depending on our, our vote for employee compensation. Uh, a couple areas could be revised up a little bit, but this is basically the library proposal that says um, it is a increase to uh, the uh, the amount to be raised by taxes and the, the bottom line of the budget. So we, why is the insurance so much more? That was like the one thing that, you know, significantly changed. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's more because we have in the past, including currently, the 
youth who have served as librarian position is at 23.75 hours. And we've held it at that for years. Um, and the library trustees are proposing for fiscal year 23 to bump it to 25 hours. Um, the library trustees as a board, we feel like it's the right thing to do. It's more equitable to not be, you know, keeping that position 15 minutes under just to deprive an employee of the benefits. So it is because of that life use service in the library position that we're proposing about 25 hours that would then trigger a second employee to qualify for benefits. So that's what we're proposing. It's an important position, it's a professional position. So we, you know, we're lucky enough to have a professional educator in that position right now. Um, and this is something we're trying to plan for the future because inevitably there will be some retirements coming up in the next, I don't know how many years, but um, when that happens, we want to be prepared to be able to attract um, another, you know, candidates that are, will still be a professional, either educator or librarian to take over that position. Um, because it is important, it serves a lot of children and uh, parents and caregivers, um, has a lot of responsibilities. And so that's what we're proposing to bring youth services library to try. The only thing I'm struggling with is the, uh, the sticker shock at the bottom of, you know, an almost 19% increase. For the insurance. In, well, it's mainly the insurance yeah. that's the main. But you're passing it all on to taxpayers and uh, that's going to be a lot of money for us to challenge with. If we're going to try to maintain some kind of a reasonable increase in our budget, we'll have to absorb a lot of that increase somewhere. And I, I think we're going to be in for a very difficult budget year this year. Uh, you know, we're seeing inflation at the 6% range. Anything we have in a budget less than 6% is really a cut in your budget. Uh, and I think we're going to be challenged to keep it at some reasonable increase. And this is not helping us. Well, <laughs> kept, so the youth services librarian position, there's been someone there doing that position for over 15 years. And we've kept it all that time under 24 hours. But the position at this point, it just, it, for a professional position, it doesn't really make any sense. Well, it just doesn't seem fair to keep someone 15 minutes under. Instead of biting off the whole thing in one year, is there somewhere else where you could absorb some of that increase so it isn't all directly passed on to the taxpayer? Like making a cut from the line? Some other, yeah. It, did you look into that? We did. It's, I mean, it's difficult because we'll, I mean, you'll notice we don't really have any other increases in our budget. Um, you know, not related to personnel. Um, our other big costs are mostly building maintenance and capital expense because we're dealing with a, you know, 125 year old building and just trying to keep it maintained and in good condition um, is where a lot of our budget goes. Um, I mean, we, we could go back and try again to go through the budget and see, but um, sure. we haven't put in any other increases. Matt, did you have something? Who's, I'm, I, I'm sorry, who's talking? Is it Sabrina or is that? Right, this is Stacey Waterman, the treasurer for the Johnson Library. Right on. Hi, Stacey. Thanks for being right. here. Um, I'm very supportive of this and I hope we can do it. Um, I'd really like to make every attempt to try. Um, this is the part of the budget season, I think, that it's time for people to come to us and tell us what they need and what they want. Um, and we need to plug that into our budget and have a look at it and see what it looks like. 
And you know, later in December and in January, we'll probably have some difficult decisions to make. So we can't make any promises tonight. Um, it's it's very possible that if we have um, a real huge increase come January, that this would be a, a place where we would look to potentially, you know, not go with that increased hours for the for the children's librarian, but. But I hope it's something we can do. I, I, I think it's uh, it's an important position, um, and uh, that the, the library is a tremendous service. And in every dollar that we put into it, we get back from uh, in terms of education and service to our community. So that's where I am. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. So this is what we're asking to consider. Um, we're asking to consider okay. well, the fact that we're not going to get any. Uh, <laughs> we're definitely not going to commit tonight, but. Um, I did just want to push back a little bit because I, I am very concerned we are going to be very challenged this year. Uh, yeah, I'd also say, well, I, I think uh, if we look back, we're always very responsible with our budget the library. Um, we don't make big increases, ask for increases no. hardly ever. Um, and mm -hmm. the whole flood proofing project has turned out to be not as expensive as we thought it would. Um, and we, you know, work together to find more cost effective ways to deal with that. And so Stacy, on that, on that, you you said something that's interesting to me. It would be interesting to see, you know, what is the over the last 10 or 20 years, what is the average increase for the library budget year over year and see how it's keeping pace with with other things. If, if we've not been making increases in this as much, or if we've been making increases to it more, it would be interesting to know that. I'll be doing that analysis. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> but no, that's a good point, Matt. I was just calculating out if we applied that, um, the, uh, sorry, my brain just shut down. You know how you start talking, your brain just stops. Inflation. The inflation rate, if we applied it here, like what that would actually mean to. I mean, I'm thinking about that in terms of everybody's budget, yours included, um, because I agree with both Eric and Matt. Like, it's really important that you're doing the right thing. And I think you're thinking about this in the right way. Unfortunately, this is happening on a year that's going to be really tough because we already have pretty significant increases. Um, but I'm not saying don't fight for it because I you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, the question I have is, and I keep going back to grant funding because with COVID there's lots of opportunity and maybe some of that, so maybe there's reading proficiency opportunity out there um, that could help ease the sting maybe temporarily, but um, that might help a little. Well, we do get lots of grant yes. funding. Yep. I'm just thinking about what schools are doing. Like I keep hearing about schools increasing their literacy, their literacy interventionists because COVID money allowed for that in the past year. And I'm just wondering if we can apply that for librarians to just thinking, you know, being free, trying to be creative about the way we approach it. And sometimes grants will help to increase staff positions or staff time, which might qualify here, although it's a very small incremental increase. Yeah, and it's the increase in salaries is where the. Yeah. Right. It's a shock. But the increase in time. You know, does result in that sticker shock. So even though it's it's relatively small in time, we still talk about the benefit. Anyway, just something to consider. Okay. For um, my clarity, the total expense at the bottom—that's the total expense to the taxpayers. Uh, no, that's the total expenses. I can't exactly say why you decided to print the single line of the tax impact on the next page by itself. Oh, did I miss something? It ran out of room from that page. But yeah, the. Oh, sorry about that. 
the amount to be raised by taxes appears as a single line on, on the second page. And also, just to be clear, Brian mentioned um, at the beginning of the discussion because the library employees are town employees, when we make our budget in October, we have to make assumptions about what they're going to decide about an increase. And so what's showing there, we assumed a two and a half percent increase just from last, you know, from what happened last year. So, you know, if you decide on a six percent increase, then that would apply to the library. Add another 3,000 bucks or so. Yeah, it, it's it says uh, it'll be an increase, but the, the bulk of the increase is the insurance because that's going from no insurance for that employee to some insurance. So that's a, a pretty big step. Um, at this time, all the board really needs to do is kind of receive the report and receive the. Mm -hmm. We're not making, we're not approving it or, or, or making any yeah. judgments on it. Just. And that is a topic for tonight is uh, rates of compensation. And I will tell you that we met with the trustees and for the joint employees, we uh, set an increase of 6% in line with the rate of inflation. So I'm guessing that that will go across all counties. But to Nat's point, maybe I've been here too long, but I can remember when the town did not support the library at all. It, lived, it, it survived on its endowments and stuff. They, they were pretty good earners back then. And it, it migrated and we had to start stepping in and helping out. And, and there always has been tremendous support from the taxpayers to the library. But uh, I can remember when, I think the first thing Oh, wait, Rosemary. Uh, first thing we took on was the insurance because you, know, you guys are starting to struggle with the, the amount of money you were earning from the endowments. That was a few years ago. Now the vast majority is supported by the taxpayers. Yeah, now a good portion of it. Very little from the endowment. 80 to 85 percent is supported by taxpayers. And enjoyed by the taxpayers. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else with that? Are we all set? I think we're all set with library budget. Maybe the tree board budget. Let's see how painful can we make it with Sue? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, the tree board budget is uh, proposed. Uh, they don't really give us a, an itemized budget, the budget tends to be a lot lower. A, a lot lower than the library. Uh, so we don't really ask for high uh, But I'm sure Sue has some talking points and things to bring up. Uh, the in budget for the tree board is, is increasing from 1400 to 2500. Uh, this is going to support uh, efforts at the arboretum. And uh, it's also going to help start a fundraising effort for shrubs. Most of that is being donated. Okay. And, uh, if we have spent anything on that, it would be some seed starters. Okay. And I call it like that. Uh, so that I'm not very really about that. Um, but it's on my list. Uh, no, we do have to remulch all the trees this year. We'll be great to get the sand out. We'll be doing that. And um, we're at a mulch at the arboretum um, to cover. I guess the bottom line here is our budget never covered the arboretum. And now it needs to. You know, we've asked for donations, we've gotten donations, but we can't depend on them. And we've gotten uh, $5 donations. And recently we got $500 donations, which we should some of that camera. So we'll find those in spring. Um, the, the more trees we plant, the more we do, the faster this thing grows, the more people come in. So it takes up the trees to help faster the 
Jack said, there's a canopy granting offer from one of the big boards up to five thousand dollars. They can just put those between everybody who tries to get some of it. So last time they put it for five, we got three. I don't know how much apply, but there are a few things on my list that I was going to ask you for that I can include in that grant in the high hole city village. Um, one of those is the ash trees that are down at the top of uh, Mill Park. We can't find any new trees there. We have three ash and two maples, nice big trees. We've been asked to plant trees there, but we can't disturb that cap. So if those ash trees die, they're gone. And I would ask that we treat them. Have gaming now in uh, Belvedere. So the time is pretty soon. I would say spring. We should, we should get there. And I'm uh, estimating it would cost five to six hundred dollars. I'm pretty sure that that grant might cover it. And I'll ask you for it. I don't think that's something we want to leave hanging with the AD. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure how you want to handle that. Uh, the other thing we would like to add down there, besides fencing, post signage, and five new trees, is uh, a gate. You may remember that last year, uh, last summer, at four o'clock one morning, a guy went down there and did donuts. Fortunately, he didn't run over anything, but I don't know about next time. So we wondered about putting a gate right in the entrance so that people could come through. But we're the only people who drive down there. Delivery truck they want us to work. Um, I look at track supply that with the posts and a latch that would probably cost us 200 to $250. And I think the village would put it in for us. They're pretty good about that. Uh, we would like to invest in some outreach materials. Uh, just got a donation of old boards to do the kiosk over because it's pretty bad. Surprise that two bullet boards for that kiosk cost 400 bucks. So we can put some things on there. Like that. So, that's it. We're probably also going to need to replace the tree in front of the Chinese restaurant. We now believe if we put those trees in pits, they're supposed to use structural soil, and most of them are full of clay, which is why we lost trees there before. So when we replant it and take everything out and start over again, please pound our first off and we will fix it. Any Village reimbursed you for those trees. I'm sorry? Does the village reimburse you for those trees? They reimb they pay for the tree in front of the merchant's bank that got hit by somebody at the end because insurance covered it. Mm -hmm. And it was the same thing for one of the crab apples in front of the uh, uh, mobile station. So. Uh, they forgot to put in for one of those cages, and they said, "Why don't you buy one, take it out of your budget?" And I said, "It costs eleven hundred bucks plus shipping." No, <laughs> <laughs> so I got to hand one. Uh, one of the other things we do have to do this year, though, is some of the trees on the south side of town. Uh, no, it's the north side of town. Uh, they're not growing their cages. We have to take those cages apart and knock out some of the wardens inside of them, so they. Don't touch the trunks. Uh, we might have to get some welding done. Uh, see if the village can help us out with that. I don't know how much that would cost. So when we ask you for twenty five hundred dollars, it's a matter of growing the artery and spending it where we need to. Okay. Well, you're almost asking for a double your. No, actually, we've gotten fifteen hundred and forty-seven dollars. Oh, okay. a couple of years. I think we got fifteen hundred bucks a year. And we got printed here. Previously. I could have 
misread it, but I, I had it. Yeah. So to take up for the president. Um, and you heard it with the library. Uh, we're collecting them. There's no yeah. guarantee. The, we, as I said, we anticipate it's going to be a painful year for the budget. Well, I'll get as much of that as I can into that grant. And we'll pick up any numbers. Uh, it's not on January 7th. And I'll probably sign that in April, whether we get it or not. So hopefully we have a good track record for that. Um, most everybody who's in on that grant program has been up to visit the office. So um, they were trusted as it should be. <laughs> So the other thing I had to ask you about was uh, establishing a reserve fund for donations. Is that possible? Put it on the ballot, me, the reserve fund. Um, can we break that down, remind ourselves in January? We'll have to think about the language, how it, you're thinking more for collecting a place placeholder for donations not leftover funds from a budget. Right. So, okay. so we can assure people that if you give money for the arbory, then that's where it's going to go. And I think it does already, but some people say, I don't know if I want to donate it. It's not designated for. Yeah. And if they'll feel more comfortable, I feel more I think that's a similar problem the like or the uh, historical society was having where they want to be able to see that it's dedicated to same thing with conservation. Right. Conservation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If you have problem, if you make a donation in June, the year end is not long after that. So no. Yeah, so the reserve fund could be a good fit. Yeah. yeah, as I say, we've got a $500 donation that we're going to spend in the spring, and I would not want to see that disappear somewhere. Well, if you spend it within the same fiscal year, you're good to go anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, hopefully you'll get some more free traffic. Fine. Anybody got any questions for Sue? Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Okay. What's that? Good to see you back. Oh, thank you. Good to be back. Welcome, Center Update. So, uh, we have completed all the work for the uh, the Welcome Center uh, for the, the modified scope. Roof is up. Everything's done. We're looking now at kind of some of the next steps and some things we want to finish now. Uh, and the first one being uh, the Trump law that we've got. So Howard sent along a letter uh, that describes it. We've got a couple of visual dates here. Uh, the photograph is the kind of what Howard describes in the letter of having individuals or kids or somebody posing and then they'd get printed and put in the, the windows of the section that looks like a, a train car. The stack of pancakes image that you're seeing is an example of the print quality uh, that we would be using to, uh, for the images. And that's a painting, actually. I borrowed that for the graphics. Uh, that, that's, that is a painting of pancakes and that sort of way. Uh, High resolution photograph in the traditional sense, it's you know, it's used hard. But uh, you, you know, you can get your nose right up to the 300 dpi. It's, um, the, the printing service that they use is astonishing. It's really quite good. It's kind of a proof of concept that we can, we will be able to print the photographs on a durable material. Yeah, that's the stuff we do. Uh, and uh, for a reasonable cost. And there was a, I guess we don't have a printout of it, but Nat sent out a proposed budget for what's left. I can't yes. remember the number now, but uh, a certain amount of it, the, uh, 
What's your name? Alexander. The, the Alexander. Alexander is we're willing to uh, contribute some more money towards some of that. Are you asking me? Yeah. Or I, have, I have no idea. Or maybe Matt knows. Yeah. Yes. So they have offered uh, to contribute more money to the project. Their, their um, priority is the Trump boy. Um, it's unclear to me whether they're willing to fund beyond that. Um, but I would like to show them this budget in its entirety and, and see what they say and see if they might be willing to uh, to offer more than the Trump boy. It's possible that that's what they want to do. It's just, it's, it hasn't been clear to me. I've been talking to more than one person in the family and one person's like, I'm going to get the whole thing done. And the other person's like, hey, we'll pay for that Trump boy. So um, more communication is needed, but this is where we're at. The budget you sent out, that is uh, closing out the first half and the proposed budget to finish it. Was that correct? So there are two things. About a week or two ago, I sent out an email um, closing out the first phase of the project. Um, and that should be reviewed by the board as well. Uh, this is the second phase of the project. This is landscaping, electrical service, bike repair station, water service, picnic tables, infographics for the inside that would be done by the historical society, garbage cans and the trunk boy. So the total, and, and I have not quoted yet, as I said in the email, I, I sent it out late this afternoon, I'm just getting into town. So um, the, the electrical, does not, I have not yet got a quote for the electrical from the pedestal to the building. Um, the electrical quote that I got from Troy from the village is for $4,400. But that's the full thing. Um, that's labor and full parts markup from the village, standard parts markup. Um, back in the spring, um, the, the village trustee trustees agreed to um, provide the service, that, to provide the labor at no cost, and to have little or no markup on materials. Um, the, the design of the electric has changed since, so I do want to bring it back to them and make sure they're still good with that arrangement. If they're still good with it, that arrangement, that $4,400 number goes down quite a bit. <laughs> From the closeout of phase one, there was some unspent portion of the budget, correct? If I remember well, correctly. That's up to you. Um, that's up to the board, uh, I guess us. Um, there is some unspent, but we also have an invoice from Howard um, that we need to uh, decide on. Um, I've got to pull up that email. Is it the twenty nine hundred? Is that your no? no there's one it's for like five thousand. I think we need to talk about that at the next meeting, Matt. Nah, because nah. this is just for the Trump boy here, which is what was born, and I'm not sure. Are you looking for action to move forward on this, or is this informational? Yeah. Um, I I, I want to be able to do something. I, the, the Alexanders offered this quite a while ago. They're, they, they're anxious to give us money. Um, and I'm anxious to get back to them and uh, so that we can accept their money and do something great with it. Um, so I would like some action um, on the budget that I just put out um, to see if the board is interested in, in moving forward with that, should it be funded um, by private donations. I believe we covered that about six weeks ago, but um... no, because we didn't have a we didn't have the quote six weeks ago. We've got this is information. I just got the quote for the Trump lawyer last week, so this is the first time that the board's been approached with with the second phase of the project. So, how much is the budget? 
$14,481. Okay. Now, keep in mind that there's still a piece that's missing, uh, a couple of pieces that are missing in terms of the electric. Which could bring it down? That would bring it up. Well, on the village side, for the, for the primary electric uh, from the pole, that could go down. It might be, I'm, I'm thinking will, but I don't know if the village is going to change their mind on helping us out. The secondary electric, that's going to go up. That's something that we have not yet voted. So, and none of this takes into account the invoice that Howard submitted. That's correct. That's that's phase one of the project, which which the board has to make a decision on. And um, before you do this, it's unknown how much the Alexanders are willing to contribute. Yep, that's right. Okay. But you said they wanted to contribute to the mural, correct? At the very least, yes. Okay. So, I mean, I guess at this point, what I'd like to do is just show them this budget as I've shown it to you tonight, and not make any huge promises unless they say, here's $15,000, do it. Which is a possibility, I think. Now, I'm, I'm saying I'm pressing you for information tonight. I did say I do want an answer tonight. And then I said I'm not giving you complete information. So if I don't get an answer tonight, I understand. <laughs> There's so, a lot of variables there. Eric, what are, I mean, I'm just looking back at our agenda and what's warned. <laughs> and what is warned is modification of the scope of wealth and sector has been completed. The proposed next step of the project is to complete the artwork. Additional future proposals include landscaping and electrification. So when I read that, I read that tonight's actionable item is the proposed next step of our work. I just, yeah, I disagree with how that's all right. I don't know how to say. Uh, I believe that the next phase of work is the entire thing. It's not simply the artwork. The line item was. No, I agree with you though. That's why I kind of said it needs to happen at the next meeting or part of it. But it does say welcome center update and next steps. We didn't really get this budget in an email until 531. So I so the other thing about this is that the artwork is part of the packet. It's the letter that Howard submitted. So I mean I feel like personally, we haven't, we can act on the artwork piece of it. It all jives like what Howard's showing, what Nat's talking about, and kicking off phase two all goes together. There's no concern there for me anyway. Um, the other pieces, though, I think there's some unknowns like the other pieces, including funding. Um, so maybe we could act on this piece and have a follow up on the other pieces. There could be fallout though, because acting on this piece could be somebody talking to the Alexanders and saying the Trump boy is going to cost three thousand bucks and rounding up. They could sure. be comfortable with paying that, and then they're done. That's possible. Yep. Well, then the project's going to be pushed, and we're going to be sitting on about a twelve thousand dollar bill. That if we can't get grants, we're going to try to get money from the taxpayers, which that was promised would not be a part of this. You might. I'm not. I have no intention of trying to get twelve thousand dollars from the taxpayers. I don't even. <laughs> no. Um. You have thoughts on best suggestion? Yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I I don't want to go to the Alexanders with one with one small part of with one portion. I don't want to say it's a small portion, but with one portion of phase two, I want to be able to go to them with 
phase two and say, this is what it is. And not just, here's another little, uh, again, I use the word little and I don't mean to. Um, here's another step forward. I, I want to show them phase two. So you go ahead and approve the Trump lawyer tonight. That's great, but I'm going to sit on it until, I would like to sit on it until uh, going after the funding until we've approved the whole thing. So, Doug? Well, I've been involved with the Alexander and the district project for a long time, and, and uh, at some point it is necessary because of the pandemic and the budget to, to turn it over to the select board you know, for their wisdom. And I, I think Evan made a crucial point. I will tell you that uh, your possible funding out there may very well disappear. You know, or it might not disappear. Evan's point, I think, is real clear. I think this is not a, a point in time if you're looking for the benefit of the community to, to be fly stepping on the wall on this. I really think that you ought to uh, uh, take a look at this. You know, the uh, uh, place is going to be garbage cans. They're going to need uh, it. should have a bike repair station, it should have a historical society. Uh, uh, display, very crucial part of, of the entry to this community. Uh, the electrical service is really, really important. The, you know, I always thought when I, when I came up with that theory that let's put the electrical service in, I thought that was a candle's nose under the tent for someday electrifying the ball fields, you know? So uh, forward thinking, if you can find a way, it would be very useful here. Thank you, Doug. Were you able to hear that, Matt? Uh, just enough to be dangerous. I probably missed some key part of it, but yeah, more or less. Okay. I, mean, I, will say, I think I think what was promised was that we would have the phase one of the project project would not cause the taxpayers anything, and we have accomplished that. I would like the, the board to take action on um, closing out the budget um, for that, but. Um, we have accomplished that. And, and how we move forward with, with, with next phases, I think is a, uh, it's another phase that, that isn't predicated on all the agreements that we made on the, the first phase of the, of the project, but I, I think we've done a significant amount without taxpayer funding already. Duncan? So I would pose a question to the board, I guess, what would be the downside of taking the, the phase two costs that Matt has put together with a considerable amount of work I might add, um, including on a number of people's parts to put that estimate together. What would be the downside of providing that to the Alexanders and saying, what portion of this do you feel like you might be able to fund? And then at that point, you know, if you've got a good idea, a good handle on what they're willing to fund, you can make decisions whether or not you want to put some money in the town's budget. I, I agree with that. I, I believe that the project um, for the phase one piece was sold to the town um, as not costing taxpayers money. It would be paid for by donation. I think that's been accomplished. Um, but I think you've got an opportunity to get more of it paid for by donation. And if you know, you know, move ahead of this, if you just keep uh, you know holding holding the brakes on it, you're gonna lose any possibility of additional funding. And I think that would be a real a real mistake and a real tragedy for the community. Yeah, I mean I I, I won't follow up on that to, to say I been really um, careful to give uh, an accurate budget for phase two um, to the point that I've been a bit obnoxious about it, I think, at times, which I'm okay with. Um, and it's taken quite a lot of time to make sure that I can present you with a budget. And you did get it at like 5 30 this afternoon of your absolutely right. So, you know, uh, you know. That's that's a fair point. Um, but a lot of time has been taken to ensure that that these are good numbers. And and the, the point of that is just to say that the Alexanders did offer us money a while ago. 
and uh, we've been holding the brakes on them for quite a while. Um, so I, I'd rather not leave that money on the table and, and, and have them get frustrated with us and buzz off. So. Um, I got a couple things here. Uh, I agree with you guys that submitting a budget to the Alexanders and seeing what they'll cover should be done. I said that multiple meetings ago. The budget's not finished. That's why we can't submit it. We're not pumping the brakes on it. If we approved sending this budget to them, we would have a meter socket and no electrical. That force needs to be figured out and we need to talk to the village to submit it. But I'd also like to point out that when this was sold to the taxpayers, it was sold as a project because the cost went up. We turned it into a phase one, phase two. This was sold as a completed project to the taxpayers. So I can understand that how you said phase one wouldn't cost anything to the taxpayers. The bill of sale was, it won't cost anything. And then we said, we way underestimated. So phase one won't, won't cost the taxpayers money. Am I understanding that? Correctly, correctly. Yeah, I think yeah, that's pretty really close. close. I don't, I guess I don't remember um, any specific presentation to the public in which it was specifically stated that there wouldn't be any down yeah, contribution. There. Maybe I missed something, but. Yeah, so regardless, um, we're at a point where, what do we need to do, right? Um, I agree with you. We. So the town wasn't putting the bill for the project period before there was a phase one and phase two. What are we doing right now? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? Right. Submit a proposal to the Alexanders, like well, Doug had just said. I want to just let Doug talk. I want to respond. Well, I, I'm all for um, that's why you have to decide what to do, but I want to just take your mask off, please. Really hard to hear. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we're not, we're not what? Um, all right, so the, um, yeah. the this, these are not the normal times, you know, we, we I was primary representative, Howard had run up numbers, we entered into a pandemic, you sent your people home for days, I believe, and there's been, there's been you know, sticking, you know, Yes, absolutely. There was a, a number of perceived costs. You know, what costs haven't changed in this period of time? You know, with that being said, I would suggest you decide how to uh, move forward. So, Nat, what's it going to take to figure out how much is needed for the secondary electrical cost? I uh, called some electricians to get them to come out and give us numbers. Okay. And um, can you talk with Will, Eric, and see if they're willing to still honor the Village Electric's uh, proposed contribution for no man hours and no material backup? I can. Ned, would you feel comfortable talking? Because you know more of the history, what's going on here, what was agreed. Yeah, either way, whichever. We'll, we'll, we'll get that. We'll get that commitment from them. Okay. Not, I mean, we'll get an answer from them. So, so, can we have a budget to present to the Alexanders two weeks from today that the board can decide on? Do my best. I don't know when, when, I don't know when the village is meeting next. True. The village's next meeting is a week from today. Okay. I'll do my best. If, if I can get electricians and get that, do my best. If you need help, let me know. Cool. Thank you. And then I can assist with the uh, village contact. Uh, I'm pretty familiar with what we need. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the costs are very similar from the original design to the second design, but I just, because it's a town village issue and I just want to make sure that communication is clear and that the agreement is going to be what the agreement is. Duncan? Uh, I'd like to ask a point of clarification and I don't know if it's Nat that would clarify that. 
but are you carrying any costs right now for secondary electric? He has a line item for it. He just doesn't have any bids. But so there's a, there's a dollar figure being carried, but it, we don't know if it's real. Right. There's nothing there right now. There's nothing there. No line. The secondary. The secondary there. hasn't been estimated yet. And that's what we need to follow up on. But also the primary may not cost that because if the village is going to donate the lady. Is that correct, Matt? Well, yeah. And was they were going to donate labor and no markup on the materials. That's correct. So That's that correct. would be a fairly significant savings because yeah. labor is a fair amount of yeah. so the cost of that. If we get that confirmation, that number will go down and hopefully we can get the number for the secondary electric and maybe it'll be a wash. Yeah. And Duncan, I know you you had submitted some time ago an estimate for right. secondary electric. Yeah. Our feeling on that is enough costs have changed that we're going to get a more current estimate on what the secondary electric will cost. I think you had that in your original proposal. Yeah. It, 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 might, have, it might have been Howard and Duncan, but yeah, well, there, there was a number there. But it's not in anything that you're looking at. Right? It's not in our current budget. We took it out based on the assumption that so few of our other earlier estimates had panned out the way we thought they were, that uh, it, it just didn't seem wise to include it and rely on it. Uh, with. Yeah. Doug, what were you suggesting the board do tonight? Well, you know, I, I think that your call perhaps by your warning. I don't know if we've gotten there earlier. You know, take, take your mask off, please. Oh my gosh. You shouldn't be asking people to take their masks off. Right. Keep the mask on for a reason. Okay. Then then uh, mumble through it. I'll try to hear what you're saying. I'll come closer. Um there you go. The I understand the predicament that you're in with the warning that we got here earlier. We could have said everyone had this for that. You know, I think that uh, that there was enough wiggle room in in that we're presenting this and we're going to discuss the other uh, to, to 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 go ahead. Now, that is based on that this is a fish I don't want to lose. You know, I probably shouldn't say that like that way, but it, it, the, the generosity of these people is, is likely to be. Uh, dampened down by the by the amount of time that they've been waiting. You know, I've had phone calls on the side. You know, about this. You know, with inquiries. You know, and, and I'm not. And I've been turning them over to Matt. To, you know, saying this is what the call. I can't. I can't turn them down and say I'm not talking to you. Uh, it, it wouldn't help us. Uh, I. Well, one thing on the the electrical service, the important electrical service to get in is the. Power across the across the tracks and get the primary. The electrical service can be done at some point. I the secondary is, is is a much easier easier job. Doesn't involve the village. Doesn't involve. Uh, it only involves the, the town and, and the electrician. You know. You know. I I would not make. I would not hold up that piece waiting for the secondary electrical number. Uh, and I would just suggest that you uh, you. Uh, Put together what might be think what might be a reasonable number based on the reasonable things that you actually need now that you couldn't do later, uh, and ask the so as not to ask too much. You know, the original amount of money from them was forty five thousand dollars. I don't know if you want to get up into the twenties or something. You know, who knows? I I I spent a lot of time with a fundraiser from the studio center and trying to figure out. When we were trying to make this deal, how much money we could get, and how we could get it, and and where and, you know, and, and what were the numbers before the pandemic? So, you know, if you're, you're in the same position I am. How can we move this ahead? Do you think it's a valuable project? And and uh, how how much are you? You know, how do you, how do you phrase this so that you're saying you want to go ahead with this and it's a viable state? Project to, to, to you, and yet not necessarily have money. You know, 
Uh, there were people who had offered, uh, who signed the list, there were six people that signed the list at that, at that uh, opening that we held, uh, to, who said that they were willing to be contacted to make contributions, you know, and we could maybe do some private fundraising, but uh, I, obviously my heart is in this, and, and I think we can both move this ahead, keep it short sighted, not to. So Thank you. Would the board feel comfortable with a motion authorizing up to some amount of money for phase two to begin? Well, up to some amount of money from where? Well, it'd be from us, and then we would have, you know, what I'm thinking is if we could get phase two started, Nat can go to the Alexanders and say, okay, the, the select board decided to start phase two. How much are you willing to contribute? And then uh, at a follow-on meeting, we could uh, have a, a you know a completed budget number. Right now, we're working with a few unknowns, and I'm I'm asking: Is there a comfort level on the board to authorize phase two to begin, not to exceed some number? Yeah, I, I want to be clear on what it means to begin. Um, I don't want to actually start purchasing materials and making obligations to vendors or, or workers um, until we've all agreed on where the money's coming from. So I think when I say, when we say we want to begin phase two, what I'm thinking is we want to begin a capital campaign for phase two. Like we want to reach out to all of our donors and say, here's the budget. We need 14, we need $15,000 to do, to build this dream, phase two of this dream. Would you give us some money for it? Because it's going to be awesome. And once we get $15,000, or maybe we'll only get $12,000, and then we'll come hat in hand to, to, the, to the board and say, can we have three? I don't know. But can we start a capital campaign at this point to say, we want funding for this? Or do you want the, the, the couple of outstanding pieces of information that, that you requested, which is fine. It's just, I'd rather not wait, but on the other hand, you know, this, this waiting thing, like it's taken us a lot of time to get these numbers to you. And uh, it's understandable. I've been in that position where people say, make a decision right now because, you know, something's going to happen, we're going to lose the funding, and then the board's in this position like, well, great, you're rushing me now because you took your time getting this information. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I understand the board being in that position as well. So what I'm really asking is to, to be able to start a capital campaign as soon as possible to get somewhere around $15,000 so that we can then um, start making commitments on spending. That makes sense. Yeah. If you're looking for the town to put seed money in to start this phase two, I, I would not support that. But that's not what he's saying. I don't think that's what Nat's saying, though, right? Right. But, but uh, Eric mentioned starting it a few minutes ago, and I just told him I would support that. Okay. So, Nat, are you looking for a motion for the okay. board to approve you? seeking funding opportunities that won't cost the taxpayers any money until we can get a finite number on what that is in two weeks or up to 18,000. If you hit 18,000 in two weeks, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. Is that um, that you're looking for? Or? I support you starting the process. Um, yeah. That's what I want to do uh, is start the process of raising money. That's that's what I want to do. So would that be the motion? So I think a fair motion could be uh, to allow uh, Nat as a, a town representative to seek donations for the, com the completion of the phase two welcome center. That we don't know a budget on yet. We don't have a final budget number for it. Uh, Nat will will be able to finish that out. Uh, you know, before we would send it on to our, especially our bigger donors like the Alexanders. We could 
some people might be okay with an estimate, but I know that some people will not be okay with an estimated, you know, the one more concrete number so we could get that. Um, but that would empower that to start seeking the rest of the fund. Uh, you will dunk, it, dunk it out of us and I'll make one, but dunk it out of us. I guess I have to hand up. I don't want to interrupt. Um, no, go ahead. Well, the only thing that occurs to me in, in as an aid to that going forward and perhaps uh, acquiring some additional donations would be that it might be attractive to anyone making a donation to know that they that donation could be uh, a tax uh, charitable contribution to them. I, I'm about 99% sure that a donation to a municipality is a charitable donation and subject to IRS uh, deduction on a person's taxes. But that, I don't know exactly how that, whether that, you know, not the historical society created a 501c3 for the purpose of fundraising specifically to do away with any questions about, you know, tax charitable donations. It may, perhaps it's something Brian, you know, or Rosemary could investigate. Um, I think it could. I can get a definitive yeah. answer on that, but I, I would not want to try and quote. I would not want to try and make it, give you an answer for that off the top of my head. Yeah, we, we went through, if I may, we we, uh, we looked at this pretty carefully at that step and determined what the line was if we're talking about what we see, but it was something right in that end of the woods. Funding for the completion of phase two of this project without taxpayers' money included. And to get the uh, estimate. And to get us an estimate within two weeks. Okay. On, on that two weeks is, uh, I really, I will absolutely do my best. Um, it's a, could be a tight time frame. So we'll, we'll see. Right. That's your target. That's my target. Okay, is the motion? Is there a second? Second. The motion is second. Any discussion? I quite a bit already. Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Go forward there, Nat. Thank you all. I appreciate it. But of course, I have a question. Go ahead. Howard. Well, what does that where what does that leave the crop boy, which which uh the mural, which is what's on your that that which is on your agenda? The difficult part about that is that Matt has that as far in part of budgeting for phase two, as I see it. He has it in budgeting for phase two. There's money left over from phase one, but we don't have that full spreadsheet, nor was it worn. So if we were to pay for this tonight. It would be out of taxpayers' dollars, and we would be hoping to reimburse from somewhere. Uh, I, I guess I okay, fine. I, I'm in no rush to get this thing done. You know, I can wait half the winter, but I hope not. No, so, quick correction: you do have the spreadsheet on phase one. I've, I've sent the board an email on that. I think you have got it. Spreadsheet of what? Of what all of our expenses were for phase one and what considerations are needed to close it out. Uh, it just wasn't part of the packet. It wasn't part of the packet tonight, but the board does have that information. Yes. Yeah. We just don't, don't have we don't have it in front of us. Yeah. Thank you. I mean that's that is something in two weeks we'll have to have the board take action on because if if there is money left over from that, then that's going to play into the phase two budget. That money should automatically roll into the phase two budget. 
Um, if there's not money left over from phase one, um, then we'll need to know that as well. But the board's going to have to make that decision based on what they do with ours in place. So in two weeks, can we have in front of us phase one, what is left over, what the budget was, phase two is being proposed, and any other voices or whatever? We'll have a, a good presentation on, on the complete okay. package. I apologize for this. Um, we had uh, yeah, uh, I just didn't have everything I, uh, in front of me. I was not able to, to confidently say that I'd be able to make a full presentation tonight. Uh, if we could have after all, but at the time when I was writing the agenda, I did not. I was not ready to make a presentation at that time. So I scaled it back a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more scaled back than we needed to. It would be nice if in two weeks we could I, I believe that we can put it to bed in two weeks. Okay. What do we think of that? Phase start. one. Ending phase one. Okay, fine. Yeah. And whether we're going to start phase two or not. Well, we have to think about it. We are. <laughs> well, he's self seeking money, seeking funding. Okay. We will if we have done. I would suspect that from the Contact I've had with people that people might say, I am going to fund this, you know, so, so you might have pieces of this disappear. So some of the questions you have about what will be paid for will, will be answered by what people are willing to contribute for. Correct. Okay. Opioid settlement. All right. So you we received an uh, overview of the national national opioid settlement. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, State's attorney. Thank you. Uh, you've got the information packet in your uh, in your handout. Uh, this we have the. I think you sent me a suggestion about this that I think makes a lot of sense. Thank you. I did. Thank you. Um, you know. Uh, Seeking advice for some of our local partners who have a little more experience in this area than we do. Uh, I think that would probably be a pretty good idea. Uh, we do have until January 2nd to respond. So I think it's worthwhile to, you know, another in two weeks kind of motion of uh, why don't we seek some input from some of our local residents who are in the recovery field. Before we make any agreements, there's no real Just downside to any agreement. I don't believe so, but I'm not familiar with what the settlements entail uh, or what we might be eligible for if we don't take the settlement. Yeah, but by reading it, I didn't think I saw anything that I raised any red flags. I didn't either, Mike. Nothing concerned me except that this is going to be, if we're going to join a class action. It's going to be a long, pro it's not going to be something that's just going to be over. It's going to be a long process. And I don't know what I don't know. And we have people in our community that are very dedicated to the opioid, um, everything op opioid related, including what's happening with settlements. And I was just thinking like maybe, I'll just throw names out there, but maybe like the Jess Bickford's following this already or the Tatros or somebody on their staff is and maybe they can help us out by, you know, being a spokesman for us or keeping us informed. In a class action suit, you don't really have to do a whole lot except sit back and take whatever you get. Understood. So I don't think we are, are going to have a lot of skin in the game. All we're going to do is say that we're interested in getting a settlement if we if there's given one or there is one but we're interested in a share let's put it that way well and there's also how we would use the funds when the settlement comes to right. to be because there's going to be specifications on percentages of where money can be spent for example like well that should be pretty easy to figure out well, it should, but do we want Brian reading through hundreds of pages of documentation if somebody else in our community is already doing that? No. No. I get your point. The recovery center, there's a lot of other places around that are involved with this already. 
So I'd be comfortable with revisiting it two weeks, if only because it's not time sensitive enough. To, yeah. Yeah. No, I don't I, think there's any downside, but I don't think there's any downside for, for us giving a little bit more information. Yeah. January. January second. January second. And if I've read the four pages that I sent you, mm -hmm. uh, I have not <laughs> read the links to the settlements themselves. Uh, or, or really any further information. I've kind of kept an eye out on VLCT and other places if anybody's published a summary yet and I haven't seen one come up. Okay. Uh, so let's yeah, let's ask our local experts. Sounds good. Compensation and benefits. So when we met with the village, we authorized a six percent raise for the town clerk and assistant. And we uh, kept it at 90% Blue Cross Blue Shield Gold plan. Count on And this is only affecting Brian and Liddy. And right now, this Jason. Is, well, and yeah, Brian, Jason, Lydia, I am Lisa, and Jean, Lisa. And what's uh, another assistant's name? Krista. Krista. We got the assistant library. Yeah. Yes. We got them. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Talk about the library because I think the trust who makes decisions about compensation for the library for the library staff. Because I, in the past, I've seen the library trustees have given wage increases for the librarians for wage adjustments. I don't recall what we've done in the past. So who's the, the library, it's another one where we, I, I believe that we copy each other, that the, the library trustees will. They're budgeting for it because it comes out of their budget, but the they are town employees. Okay, well, again, I'll say that I, I know that the library trustees in the past have made wage adjustments for the library. They just went into executive session there last week to talk about holiday bonuses for their employees. Which, would, Which is okay with me. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. The trustees. It's okay with me if the trustees do that, but um, I, just want to, I just want to be clear on who's, who's responsible for what. Yeah. Well, I, I guess it should all be one way or the other. Agree. I agree. Yeah. So, so yeah, okay. You don't have to include the library staff if you don't want to. Um, and I know Rosemary's not. We have a memorandum of agreement somewhere. Just so if you can dig it out. That's mostly about if there's an emergency. I don't believe that that mentions pensions compensation. I think. What are the, uh, we have others. Uh, like auditors, they get hourly salaries. The auditors don't get any adjustments. Uh, we haven't made an adjustment to the auditors. Oh, the library trustees have always set the library employees. Oh, they have? Okay. Where, where did you go? In the other room. Do you think you know it? You feeling okay, Rosemary? Huh? You feeling okay? Yeah, just tired. They're on a trip. Where'd you go? Europe? The other side of the country. Okay. Um, but it, it is a good point on the some of the people that when I was, when is the last time we gave them increases like the auditors? Uh, auditors have been a while they've been complaining too. Donna. Didn't that say Donna? Yeah, I think he's asking. Yeah, Donna. Yeah, I've been thinking that it probably is about time for me to. I mean, it's been a long time since I've got a plain kind of increase. And the underhill board just decided to increase me by $2 without me even asking for it. You wouldn't want to have them be better than you guys, would you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's a great negotiation strategy. Well, you don't have to write these long dissertations for us. Like you do some of these other boards, so we could easily afford it. I think. Um, 
I mean, we certainly want to stay competitive and not lose you. What are we paying now? 20. 20? Yeah. It's, it's been like that for quite a while. Um, you have here with 22 of them. 22 for the undercoat board just decided on. I guess I'm not even sure I haven't even sat down and figured out what percentage that is. But if you haven't received it, an increase in a lot of years, yeah. you know, if you had a percent and a half, the two percent increase every so often, it would even up to the ten percent yeah. on the two dollars. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's an oversight we've had is people like yourself, the auditors, we never keep up with it year to year with yeah. the you know, modest increases rate of inflation. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we figure out that uh, we spent 20 years since we gave them an increase. Mm -hmm. We're going to do that tonight. We should probably do all of them. You know, the auditors, Donna, uh, obviously our, our employees. Is there anyone else? I'm missing. Select board members. <laughs> That's not our Select choice. Board members. <laughs> I call for a reduction. <laughs> okay. I'm not really prepared to move for anybody other than town employees. No, we just give them a stipend, anyways, yeah. or uh, like Donna. But what do we get the listers? Well, that's a contract now, so we don't pay listeners. I mean, uh, what were you talking about? The auditors. The auditors. The auditors. It's not much more than minimum wage. And <laughs> we may be in trouble trying to find replacements if any of them get done. Yeah, uh, we would be. Yeah. You know, so you're thinking you're liking the eight dollars. For ten dollars, right? No, wait, just twelve dollars. Oh, is that what it is? It'll go up again in anywhere. Okay, so they're in that green. Mm -hmm. We should give them fourteen. Well, minimum wage is going to go to fifteen. Oh, when's it going to go to fifteen? Eventually. Well, eventually, but not right off. Yeah. Have you mentioned fire warden? Or uh, that's a stipend, isn't it? 250. Yeah, but it should, it should increase every year. I don't know if it should increase every year, but yeah. it would be fine if we increased it. I don't think we increased it when Gordy finished. Uh, so I, I couldn't tell you when the last time we increased that was. I think we did increase it when Gordy left. We went from 200 to 250. That's all we paid for? Yeah. And plus assistant fees. Well, maybe uh, maybe we should only address our regular employees tonight. If we could get a list of all those others, like auditors, fire wardens, sure, and find out what they're currently making. Um, and Donna. And Donna. We can address Donna. Or we can address Donna tonight, but. What's fourth pleasure? I wonder that we paid Donna $23. Second. Got a motion and a second to raise Donna's salary to $22. Starting when? January 1st? Today. What do you? I just will do it right now. Effective immediately. Effective immediately. Is that a friendly amendment? Friendly. Any other discussion? None. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Now I would entertain a motion on the town employees. Uh, motion to give them a 6% increase in salary and keep the health benefit contribution the same. I'll do it right now. Sure. Yep. Is this also for Alex? For who? Alex Nato? No, this is for full time employees. Full time? Yeah. He doesn't get any benefit, right? No. No. But he usually gets that increase. He usually gets the he raise. Gets the same increase. Usually. I guess it would be. 
That's so what's historically always been done. Make a motion to give a 6% increase raise and those eligible health insurance would be? The same contribution. Um, same. I would just like to not vote if I like have discussion before you vote. Oh, well, let's just put the motion on the table. Then. So we've got your motion. Do we have a second? Second. A motion is second. Um, yeah. So for as we talk through all this, all of these things, and we keep talking about our budget is going to be, we're going to have trouble this year figuring out our budget because everything's going up. And I fully support paying staff, and I am not suggesting we don't get the increases we're talking about at all. I'm not suggesting that. But what I am suggesting is if we are easily deciding on these increases, and I know we already decided on it with the joint meeting, I get all of that. We should make sure that we have the same attitude in hearing out people who are coming to us for money too because it's not just us. It's also like the library, we just gave them a hard time about benefits and it's not their fault benefits cost so much and they're trying to do the right thing. Um, and this is gonna be a pretty big impact. When we talk about raising wages for all of our employees, that's a big total budget impact. I get it doesn't cost as much of a, as a truck, <laughs> but it's still a big impact. So. I just want to make sure that we, the things we're talking about, we're applying the same level of thoughtfulness here as we will apply to everything else we'll be talking about later. That's it. So we just back up a little bit. Um, years ago, our, and it wasn't that many years ago, all of the increases salary was done on July 1st when we went into the fiscal budget. Well, all of the increases that the employees see for health care benefits are January 1st. Yeah, that's when that happens. So we at some point uh, decided we would start giving pay raises on January 1st. And when we build our budget that we're going to be building, we automatically build in a Three percent increase. Uh, it varies a little bit year to year, but three percent are which that's going to happen January first. Normally, that's enough to cover us. This year is very unique, and you're right; it's, it's not going to cover us. We're, we're, we we would, would have had a a hole to fill if it had not been we lost an employee in the fire department. Right. Um, but it is something that we do think about. And there was reasons why we moved to this being raised on January 1st. And one of the reasons that the, the work has to be done when we meet with the trustees is the trouble that we used to get into where the village would give some amount more than the town or vice versa. And these, especially the office employees, they're sitting right next to each other and it would cause wars you know, yeah, I, I remember. I remember listening. Okay. Uh -huh. So, I mean, that's sort of how we get to where we are. To your point, yeah. I'm not suggesting we. I'm not suggesting anything wrong is happening. I'm just saying that I really hope we, in all the discussions we're having, because we're making a lot of money decisions right now, more than normal right now, yeah. and I just want to make sure we are as thoughtful in our money decisions right now as we are when we get into budgeting that's it do we know well the deal is as we all know that these are quite difficult times that we're in and our employees to maintain good quality employees is very difficult mm -hmm. and uh, we can't survive without public works and office help but we could survive without a library I mean, I'm not advocating getting rid of the library, but I'm just using that, you know, and I've had people say to me, you know, why do they need to plant trees over there in the old ball field when the woods are full of them? You know what I mean? You hear that kind of talk. Well, when they come looking for more money to plant more trees, you know, when you think about it, is that actually needed? I mean, we have money issues that we 
have to decide which is important and which isn't. You know, and as far as I'm concerned, employees are some of the most important assets that a town has. Totally agree. And we have to take care of them and to to give them a livable wage. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the other stuff uh, isn't quite as important as far as I'm concerned. Sure. So do we need to amend that to just say effective January 1st or that's assumed? Um, I think it's assumed, but it should okay. be a part of your motion. Is that a friendly amendment? Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Nat, do you have anything? No, sir. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And believe me, I will want to push back on everybody that comes in because we will be working. I think we're going to be working very hard this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the goal? All right. So this is still a work in progress, but I have an update to uh, could be our whistleblower protection policy. Uh, first draft we saw of this was pretty much just the model itself. Um, so this is based off of a, uh, in particular, a was based off of it solely for financial reporting. Uh, and we're, we still have work to do about building it out for complete support, uh, but it's on its way. I really like where it's at though. I think that I think it's it's made a lot of improvements. Yeah. Uh, but I think that there's a little bit more to do. Uh, I also heard. Uh, I think Evan, you mentioned it last time that you wanted for some of these policies a little bit more employee feedback on this. I gave it to the office staff today, and we're going to and tomorrow I'm going out to the garage, uh, and I'm going to give it to the garage employees tomorrow too. So the next revision will incorporate feedback from our the rest of our employees. Um, well, this uh, oh, it's a policy, so this would apply to the, uh, the union job, right? It would. Uh, it's not an employment policy. Uh, you know, I share it with the union. They could object to it and say that this is a change in working conditions, and so they would they could want to negotiate something about this. But um, I think they'd be hard pressed. I, I don't think that this is working conditions, and so I don't think that we're going to have to negotiate anything with the union about this. Uh, and even if we did, I don't think it objects to any of it. So I, I think we're in the clear on that. Good. So no action tonight? No action tonight, unless anybody has any specific feedback. Um, I really like how far it's gone. I appreciate that. Beth has given me a lot of great feedback on it also. Uh, We've got more to do. Good. Thank you, Beth. No problem. Any further comments, questions? You're real special. Oh, you are too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, um, if I can back us up into the discussion about compensation. Okay. Very quickly. Uh, eligible employees. We're talking about that, but that does include our pay scale. None of our current employees are on the uh, public works pay scale anymore, but we're bringing a new employee in. So it would presumably apply to them. I've spoken to the union about the proposal and the union has in principle agreed to the change. We'll have to issue a document where that we can ratify. Uh, that agreement, but they want to see they want to see the the our proposed increase before they uh, agree to it or not. So at our next meeting, we'll have a an agreement to ratify between us and the union to apply this to the public works pay scale. Why wouldn't they agree with it? Really, I didn't think it would be a problem, but it's still that it's they have to approve. Yeah, it's a change in compensation, so they have. Yeah, they have to go through their motion. Do you know where he falls in that table yet? Or? I do, and I, I didn't bring it with me. No, no biggie. So he's going to start pretty soon. Tomorrow, part of the reason, one of the things I'm doing when I go out to the garage tomorrow is 
the, uh, the last pre-employment part of our new hire. Uh, it is getting over the first pre-employment drug test. How did they uh, take it in his previous employment? Uh, he has declined to inform his employees until he finishes his pre-employment screening with us. Oh, okay. gotcha. Which is fair. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. Okay. Uh, beautification committee had a couple of requests. One, they want to like to apply for a rise up Vermont grant for picnic tables. Yes. Uh, they're applying for a grant for picnic tables uh, to use on the village green. No town match. No town match. Uh, Rise VT is uh, a good partner with the town. They, they give us you know, money here and there for quite a few uh, recreation and beautification projects. Basically, they just need our authorization before they can apply. Yep. Yeah, if they accept the money, they're obligating us to finish something, so they, they need the board's approval to do that. What's the board's pleasure on that? How can we say no? What um, for? Wait, shouldn't that be done through the village? Uh, there are committees, so we have to approve them going for a grant. So moved, Mr. Chair. We have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We discuss it. So the so the property would be the town's property then. The the picnic tables will be town property located on the village green. Just to blur the lines. Yeah, it seems to me it should be a village thing. I, I, I don't oppose it, but uh it's my input. How about we gift the uh picnic tables to the village? Yeah, that way we get rid of our liability too. Yeah, that they're, you know, it's a town committee that's applying for the money. So we we do need to be involved to that extent. But if we don't want to have anything to do with the picnic tables, we can just offer them to the village. Somebody falls off when they sue the village. Yeah. <laughs> well, is that considered a friendly amendment? Yes. That they'll be gifted to the community? Gifted to the village. Who seconded it? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, friendly, that. friendly amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Then the second item was lights on Railroad Street Bridge. So the beautification committee would like, like to string seasonal lights on the trellis over the Railroad Street Bridge. Uh, there's a couple solar options uh, that we might try. Uh, I don't think there are any electrical outlets there. So I think we'll have to use a solar option, uh, but they need our permission to do that. Do they have the lights? They don't have the lights yet. They have enough room in their budget to purchase them, okay. uh, but they have not made the purchase until. Where are they gonna be located? On what part of the bridge? Uh, Railroad Street Bridge. Yeah, I know the bridge, but where on the bridge you say? Like in the trellis up, up high. Okay, so who's going to install them? Uh, I imagine that we'll probably try and get public works involved in that. Okay. Um, pending availability. Uh, I don't think we want to put volunteers out on the icy bridge. Again, if we uh, use public works for any other committee or entity in the town, they should receive a bill for the town services. So it's gonna take time for our employees to do that if they have to do it. So the, the beautification committee should receive a bill from the town for that. We have talked about that in the past. It's not fair to take money away from one and, and not take money away from another. So, you know, we need to do that. Any of that kind of work for anybody other than our own public works department, they need to receive a bill. We need to, that's a budget decision. We need to arrange our budget. I, I agree with the principle. We need to arrange our budget that way when we set it up. Because our budget is just a flat salary line, right? Yes. yes. 
Right, and we put money in the public works budget, and so it's been understood that there is time and money there for public works projects. I, I, but it's never been defined as to how much, and and we should do that. So I agree in concept, but I, I don't think we should just turn that on right now. Well, I think anybody, any group in the town that uses the services of the Public Works Department should receive a bill for this because you're taking taken away from uh, work from the Public Works Department could be doing. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. But I, I, it's a matter of how we do it. it, it it's a budget issue. And to be fair to the other committees, they would have to, <clears throat> you'd have to give them warning of this so that they could build that into their budget. I know, but we've talked about this for years. And it's just amazing it's never been done. You know, we never get it done. So we need to bring it up when we do budget this year. You better We're going to be spending lots of quality time together. <laughs> you better believe them. I right. think the public works guys are stretched too thin to have more stuff like this on their plate right now. Same here. I think lakes are pretty, but we can get by without. Yeah. We couldn't, we could give them the permission to hang the lights. On the handrail. On places that they can reach themselves. The well, then you're going to have people messing with them then. That was why I was interested in hanging it in the truck. Then somebody's going to get bid on one of them, and then, then it's all going to be hacked to pay for that. I don't think we need the lights on the bridge. Is there any board interest in approving that? I right, would entertain a motion. Do we have a motion? No. Oh, we were talking about the request. Lacking the motion. Um, what is, sorry, I don't have this in front of me. What is the ask specifically? Uh, permission to put lights on the bridge. Just permission to put lights on the bridge. Yes. Okay. And my suggestion is that realistically, we would not want volunteers getting up into the trellis over the bridge because they would need to be in the roadway on ladders, which I don't think we would want to encourage members of the public to do. Yep. So a motion to allow the beautification committee to put lights on the bridge as long as there is no climbing of any structure to install said lights. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll oh, second We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? You didn't put in your motion that they shouldn't be asking the public works department. I did not say anything about it. It's implied that they're not climbing things. You told me I wasn't supposed to find something. I'll find somebody else that's supposed to find that. Well, it's on. Further discussion. I think this is my poly time might really have it. <laughs> That's not so beautiful. Uh -huh. He's got a brain in his head. Uh -huh. Not seeing any further constructive discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Did Matt and Mike both vote no? No, well, I, we're gonna have to do I'm roll doing roll. a roll call. Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Beth, how do you vote? Aye. Evan, I said I. But what did that say? Did that say yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Evan, how do you vote? Nay. Mike, how do you vote? Nay. And the chair votes nay. Motion fails. Okay. Uh, the other thing was a mask mandate. I added this. It was not something I intended on bringing to the board. Uh, as you probably all know, the legislature. Uh, authorized towns to have a mask mandate, but there are a lot of people questioning whether we were going to do it. Uh, some people are feeding back to Brian, so I thought I would kick it up to the select board. And uh, is, is there a board interest in making a town wide mask mandate? No. The question is town wide. Or Public building. 
or some other limiting factor. <coughs> Eric? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Um, I got an email um, from the chair of the library trustees requesting that we support a mask mandate requirement for the library itself. Um, it's a small space. Um, they, they have been asking patrons to wear masks since early fall, and they've had a few minor challenges with that, but it's um, unique compared to other town buildings in that they have a lot of small children come for visits. They've heard from a few young families who say they appreciate the mask requirement and feel comfortable visiting the library because of that. Um, this is a part of the mask mandate that we could, this is a, this is a mandate that we could actually enforce because if somebody doesn't have a mask on, we can kick them out of the library. And if they don't, then we can issue a do not trust password or whatever, but we can enforce it. So I would like to um, have a mask mandate for the library. Um, I think everybody should be wearing masks out in public, um, but whether we mandate it or not, I don't think it's gonna have a big impact on behavior um, and we can't enforce it. Uh, I think it's kind of irresponsible if I'm failure to draft that legislation the way they did. But, um, so I'm, I'm not crazy about a timeline mandate, but I would like to like us to, um, to approve a library mask mandate. They do know they could require that on their own, correct? They did, and they'd like our support. If they, I think they feel that if we supported it, it would have more, um, more impact and more, uh, more backing. They're asking. They're asking. Okay, fair. And but we really don't have any enforcement either. Um, if if somebody violates uh, that, we can kick them out of the library. It's our building. But so could they. Yeah. So they're asking for our help in backing them up on, on the policy. Okay. Motion to uh, make mask mandate at the library. We have a motion, mandatory mask at the library. Do we have a second? Second. We have motion and a second. Any discussion? So there's already a requirement by that. And you said the trustees came to you, but is that at the will of the employees or at the will of the trustees? Oh, the employees support, well, Jamie supports this as well. I don't know about other employees, but the that librarian supports it and the trustees support it. It would they Jessica says it would be great to have the select boards backing as well. It makes it easier for the staff to deal with the challenge if we know we have the backing of the trustees and the select board. I don't think there's any reason we should disagree. If they're coming to us and asking for us to support them, we should support them. This is a public health interest and they're clearly concerned. So we should support them in their ask. The only well, they've already got the authority anyway. They don't need our support. Yeah, they do need our support. They're asking for our support. If they didn't need our support, they wouldn't ask for it. We're, we're here to support the library. It's not going to cost us anything. <laughs> I mean, come on. But they could do it on their own without our support. That's like saying if our public works asked us for support of something because they wanted the town to stand behind them. And we said, no, oh, I, get, I get the whole yeah. process. Well, uh, then how's it different? Well, no, I, I get it. But I'm I'm not for any mass mandates for anything. They're so, not asking if you're for it. They're asking for them to be able to enforce it. I understand that. But but we are I, we are part of it. So in other words, if you if you were against a mass mandate of any type and you supported it, then you wouldn't be against a mass, mass mandate. So, well, it's a ridiculous position to say you're just against a blanketly against a mask mandate. We are asking a librarian to be in a small building with the public that are coming in during a pandemic. They're asking for our support, and for us to not give it is really, really irresponsible. Uh, well, that's your that's your belief. I mean, it's not a big deal when you go in to borrow a book and put a piece of cloth on your face. Any further comments? 
I get really mouthy when I'm in my living room alone looking at you guys. Yeah, I know you do. You probably <laughs> get it drinking a beer. Uh, are we ready to vote? Yep. Okay, all in favor, sing five, sing aye. Aye. Those aye. vote? Aye. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Evan, how do you vote? Aye. Mike, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Nat, how do you vote? Aye. Yeah, how do you vote? Ayes have it. Motion passed. I apologize for getting a little heated there. That's but all right. Uh, you know, in, on this same uh, flavor, I do not support a town-wide mandate. I just think it's not enforceable, and I think it may alienate more people than uh, not. I would support a mandate in this building, if, but um, that would require the trustees to agree as well. I would only support that if the employees want it. All of our employees are wearing masks when they're dealing with the public. Um, I think that if we wanted to institute a mask mandate, for the building, I would ask the employees, at least when they're not at their workstations, at least when they're at their workstations, not be required to wear a mask. Uh, I think that not having asked our, our employees about that, I think that if that was the requirement we made, everybody would agree to it. Um, but I know all the employees have expressed that they do not like to wear a mask when they're sitting at their workstation by themselves, I don't, I don't like to. I don't, I don't think anybody does. And I actually was thinking more of up here than downstairs with public meetings. Oh, just up here. Um, if there's a public meeting requiring everybody to have a mask. I don't really know if it's needed. I mean, I took, I took count. I wasn't a single person in here without a mask on already. Yeah, there was only one, but. Uh, you're right. Most people are wearing them now. And who was it? Jason. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but I mean, it hasn't been a problem yet. There hasn't been a lot of people here. If there was a lot of people, you know, we could do it. There's a problem. Yeah. The thing is, we're, so I'm just going to speak up because this really bothers me a lot that I feel like pride gets in the way of public safety. And for me, I wear a mask, not so I don't get sick. I wear a mask so you don't get sick, and you don't get sick, and you don't get sick, and you don't get sick. Like, I care about my neighbors. I care about people getting really sick. And I'm going to wear a mask, and I'm going to wear one because I don't want people of Johnson dying. That's just the bottom line. And when it comes to, like, we're in a pandemic, this is public health. And if people don't like wearing a mask, I'm sorry you don't like it. To say that it is your, your choice, sure, it's your choice, but your choice is impacting everybody around you. And if we all cared about the person next to us a little bit more and less about how we feel about something, we would not be in the situation we're in right now. And I just feel like I understand a mask mandate is not enforceable because we do not have the support of the state. I get all of that. I think that there's some principle behind it that I surely would stand behind it. if anyone else wanted to back me, would stand with me on that principle. Um, I don't think I would have the votes. I'm not going to put a motion in for that reason, but um, I feel pretty strongly about that. I think that uh, we should be really trying to protect each other more. Well, the deal is most mass people wear it really that good anyway, when you get right down to it. Especially people with beards on, it gets around it and all this other stuff. You know, you, you some people get their nose stuck out, you know. And are we, are we going a little bit off topic yeah. about our opinions instead of what's just for the family? No, the question's about mask mandates. That's our agenda item. And so we're talking about my opinion on the mask mandate. Understood. And you said that you weren't putting forth the whole issue, but we don't have to. I mean, if, if the segment of the board changes uh, or things
things in the community change the state whatever uh we could bring it back and, and talk about it again but we could put it in for a five minutes every meeting if you want i mean just because the situation might change but we, i don't we can provide future updates huh? we can provide future updates on what conditions are like uh you know i i would say that i i think that it's pretty i think it's pretty well supported to do something at at the municipal building it would take for the the cooperation of the village trustees but i think a mandate inside this building was would be would be good i could be better about wearing my mask uh, when i'm here so uh, our are they allowed to put something on the front door that says masks required, not mandated? Um, um, I guess they could. Well, you please the wear your mask. We have is, please wear your mask. It, the provision we have is what's on the door now, which is, you know, that we encourage, I think it's please wear a mask, masks are encouraged. Um, you know, but yeah, I think that most employees would probably support a, a mandate for the, the building. Would we not? I mean, you think most of plays. I hear what the words you're saying, and I totally agree with sitting at your desk. You don't have to wear one, whatever. You're as saying that the mask. village would need to consent. What were you saying, Rosemary? As long as we at our desk, we don't have to wear one. We're out of the bag. That's fine. Yeah, but mostly that people are. We did that before. Yeah, if it mostly turns, people are wearing it. Attorneys come in, you require a mask, right? We have been telling them it's their choice, but we could change that. Now, I, I think pretty much all the attorneys I've seen have been wearing masks. You know, we have not had any real problem with cooperation on that. Most people are wearing masks. I don't think it would be a big change if we started requiring it. Uh, so anybody that comes behind the window typically wears a mask. If it's on the other side of the window, well, you're not face to face anyhow. Well, I guess maybe talk to the employees and see if they want to request that we uh, okay. mandate it. And uh, still have to the trustees as well. Right, but if you could talk to them and make a request to the trustees for next week, yeah, you know, then I'll wait a bit. Yeah, yeah, we don't have, we can, if we want to do it, we can request from the trustees next meeting and then the, the town meeting after that. Does that have to be renewed every 30 days until we should put some date on it, you know, some interval because the state and all says every 30 days, yes, until April 30th. Well, the library is gonna have to come back in a month. Are they? They have to redo it every 30 days. Well, if they wanted the town, the select board support uh, every month, but they wouldn't have to do it. If they right. didn't require the select board support, they could just revisit it and do it on their own. They should at least be made aware. They're yeah. looking for support since the state says it's every 30 days. I, I can encourage them to, you know, set a time to revisit the topic on their own. Well, they're, well they're, they're, they're doing it. I expect that they will be discussing it at most of their meetings. Um, when we had a mask mandate for the building and we were at the height of the pandemic, the best one feels wrong to describe last summer and, and everything is the height of the pandemic, but we actually have more cases now than we did then. <laughs> I know. Actually, it, today, Memorial had more than one. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad right now. It's the worst it's been right now. Yeah, yeah. And we keep saying that. Like, how many times over the past three months have we said it's the worst it's been? A lot. Uh, but we were at when we were making all of our accommodations. We were revisiting that just about every meeting. Yeah. Well, this new variant is a lot less problematic than the 
Delta one, and let's just hope it mutates itself right to a million. Because it could do that. So let's hope it does. Okay. I'll talk to the employees and bring it back up. Request it. Anybody got anything else they want to bring up? If not, stand adjourned at 926.